Hey everybody, it's Stuart here from Bits of Chips and welcome back to my journey into profitable poker. So today I'm going to be doing the first of a two-part video about essential poker math. I had originally planned to do one video about mathematics needed in the beginning. However, there are some key concepts that need to be understood before using maths. Poker math is another core component necessary in any strategy and decision making. However, most players at the lowest stakes do not use it. Although they have a basic understanding that mathematics plays a part in poker, they never implement it. This provides us with a massive advantage against our opponents, as it is another tool that we can utilise against them. So let's take a look at some mathematics that I can use. There are two aspects of analysis in poker. First is reading your opponent, and the second is using mathematics to ensure we make the correct mathematical move based upon our reads on our opponents and their tendencies that help us understand the range of the hands that the opponent can have in his hand. This tells us how likely it is that our opponent has a made hand versus a drawing hand, as well as how strong it is. When we use basic mathematics to supplement our reads, our goal is to ensure that we are maximizing how often we make profitable moves, while minimizing unprofitable ones. In poker, making a profitable move is called a positive expected value, or a plus EV, and an unprofitable one is called a negative expected value, or minus EV. Expected value will be covered later on in this video. When playing poker, it is a good idea to start thinking about your bet sizing. This concept is universal in every stake in poker. It is universal to talk about bet sizing in terms of size of the bet as it relates to the pot. So for example, one quarter pot size bet, half pot size bet, or a pot size bet. Thinking about stacks and pot sizes in big blinds is another important concept, as it is commonly used in the poker world. Making bets in big blind sizes is the most common way of counting bets in poker. A poker player may say it's common to bet three big blinds pre-flop. The term big blind can mean two things in poker. It either refers to the position on the table or it refers to the bet sizing. Effective stack sizes. Effective stack sizes is another very important concept that we need to understand because it has a big impact on the strategy you play. Effective stack sizes is the size of the small stack between two players. It dictates how much a player can win or lose in a single hand against one opponent. Here's a quick example. You are in the small blind with a $150 stack, and your opponent is in the big blind with an $80 stack. The most any one person can win in one hand is $80, so the effective stack size is $80. Probability. Probability is the likelihood of something happening. Probability is the number of times something will happen out of the total number of chances it can happen. This can be expressed in a fraction, odd, or a percentage. The most basic way to demonstrate this is a coin flip. The chances of flipping a coin on a head is, there are two faces and we want to see one face, so it is one out of two, or 50%, or half. With this information, we can begin to work out probability of hands being dealt in poker. The probability of being dealt pocket aces are, there are four aces in a deck of 52 cards. Once we are dealt one card, there are now three aces in a deck of 51 cards. This is expressed in a formula of 4 divided by 52 multiplied by 3 divided by 51 multiplied by 100. And your result is 0.452%. So the chances of being dealt pocket aces is just under half a percent. Odds. Odds are another way of expressing ratios in poker. This is another commonly used method such as 2 out of 1, which is also stated 2 to 1. In poker, they play two major roles. The first is the odds or probability of making a hand, such as trips or flush. The second is pot odds, which is the odds that we offer our opponents when we make a bet, and the odds we are accepting when we call a bet, but we will cover these later on. As stated, there are different ways to work out your probability in poker. It is, however, a good idea to choose one method and use that but it is also good to have an understanding of the other ways just in case you come across them. I, like a lot of other players, use the percentage method, as it is a little easier to use, but we still need to know how to convert percentages. So here are a few examples to help you understand how to convert them from ratio to percentage. So the formula is M equals reward, N equals risk. So M plus N equals reward plus risk. So percentage is equal risk divided by reward plus risk. So here's a quick example. Given that 2 to 1 is m over n, where m equals 2 and n equals 1. So the percentage is 1 divided by 2 plus 1 equals 1 third. 
one third is equal to 33%. So two to one odds equals 33%. So here is a quick table of some common ratios and their conversion to percentages. It's a good idea to memorize these as it's a quick reference when you're playing. Equity is our share of the pot if a hand is played to showdown. It tells us how much we expect to win in the long run based upon how often we should win. It's based upon probability and odds. Variance. When understanding odds, there is one major concept we need to take into consideration, and that is variance. Variance is the deviation from the expected results, which can have unexpected results in the short term. However, variance has less of an impact the longer your progress. So for example, if you flip a coin four times, it may land on its head 100% of the time. This is variance. As stated before, the chances of flipping heads in any single event is 2 to 1, or 50%. So when we flip a coin four times, we should expect to get two times heads and two times tails. Now, if you carry that a test again, but flip a coin 150 times, your outcome will be closer to the probability of the expected outcome. So let's take a look at this coin flip simulator to demonstrate this. So as you can see, when we flip the coin 10 times, our expected probability is very erratic. And as we said earlier, the expected outcome would be a five to five split. So this is a clear example of how variance affects probability in the short term. Now, if we begin to flip the coin 150 times, we can now begin to see the probability being closer to the expected outcome of 75 to 75. So this is a good example of how variance affects probability in the short and long term. Pot odds. Pot odds are the immediate odds we are being offered when we call a bet in poker. This relates to the risk rewards ratios, which means how much we are risking to what we can win. An example of this would be, there is $10 in a pot on the river. The villain bets $10, making the pot $20. Our action would be to fold, call, or raise. If we call, we are risking $10 to win $20. So our reward risk ratio is two to one. Going by our odds to percentage table, we can see that this equals to 33%. If we expect to win more than 33% of the time, we should call. But we will discuss this in the next video. First, we need to determine our pot odds in the reward risk ratios. So pot odds equals pot size over amount to call, where pot size includes any and all bets on the current street, not including our call. When we put this in the formula, we can calculate our equity in the pot. So pot odds equals reward over risk. Ratio equals pot size over amount to call. Reward equals pot size, risk equals amount to call. So that's the first part completed of the maths needed in my strategy. The next video, I'll finish off these concepts so I have a good understanding of the mathematics I needed in poker. So thanks for watching this video, and I hope you join me on the next one. And as always, if you want to find me, you can catch me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or you can just comment on the video below. And if you haven't already done so, please press the subscribe button now. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you soon.